Hey, what's up? It's Tyler here, and this is, I think, my third or fourth time recording this video. I have kind of come to realize at least a video actually getting to you is better than trying to get the best video possible. I'm going to support two malls. One that's organic, and this is actually one of my friend's uh, characters for D&D &D that they put together on Hero Forge. Then we're also going to do one more model, and it's going to be more of a hard surface model and this is going to be an actual upcoming ship from our new campaign that's arriving on Kickstarter on Monday. And so this is going to be a bit of a reveal to see what the new ship looks like. There's going to be some other new ships, but this is one of my favorites. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, here we are, you guys. And instead of going through the entire model and just like showing you the entire process, I'm going to show you the main techniques that I use. We can just jump into the important stuff and then we can jump over to the other model. Okay, so first and foremost, well, first, let's go ahead and see if this repairs, because sometimes there are holes in the model and we just need to have Leechy automatically repair it. Sometimes it still won't repair. So what I do is I jump into prepare or export, and I'll actually just look at what the layers look like and see if there's any significant holes in the model. And that can be a problem because if you've got liquid resin stuck in the model, it'll eventually explode. <laughs> so you don't want that. If you're gonna hollow your models, you're gonna want to have a hole to actually drain it out. If the model's not very big, I prefer not to do that. I prefer not to hollow it. I prefer to just have it be one solid object because draining it is just kind of a pain. So orientation is going to be drastically important and it's gonna be the first thing that you're, you're gonna need to figure out. And you should take some time to figure it out. You should take some time to figure out what's the optimal, what's the best orientation for this model because it's going to make the rest of your supporting process a lot easier or a lot harder depending on what orientation you choose. There's not necessarily a best orientation for every model, but certain orientations are going to have pros and cons. So for example, if we orient this character like this, then we're going to have better looking front section. Generally, the things that are facing away from the build plate are going to look better. And so I try to keep the most important parts, the top of the spaceship or the face of the character, towards um, away from the build plate, essentially, and towards the FEP. Because this is the build plate, the FEP is up. <laughs> if we orient it something about like this and then turn it maybe over about over here so that the swords are both coming out away from the base a little bit and make it a little easy to add supports under them while also making sure that we can support the bottom of both of these capes because these are going to be islands essentially. These are going to be printing in the air for quite a while before it actually connects back to the model. So we're gonna need to be able to su set supports in there. Then what we're gonna do is I jump into the magic tab here and I make sure that these three, auto orientation, auto supports, and bracing supports are off so that I don't ever accidentally activate them. <laughs> I found that, I mean, auto supports are cool. It will automatically try to add supports to your model. Auto orientation I found is kind of trash um, it doesn't usually pick very good orientations, and you could hit it over and over again and try to get it right. But with the auto supports, you'll get decent results. For example, and then here, here's actually, you know what, I'll show you real quick. Here's a quick way that you could actually get auto supports and get a decent support for your model. If it's a smaller model like this, which this is just a 25 millimeter scale character, we could do something like auto supports and optimize. I don't like to do bracing. I'll show you what happens when we brace them. It's going to add a bunch of braces in between. It optimizes, then it braces, and this that's a lot of bracing. And what you'll find is when you try to take this model off of the build plate and try to get these supports off, it can be really hard, especially as we add more supports because this is not enough support. What we do is we go into the prepare tab because there's going to be plenty of parts of this that are going to deform. Like, look at this sword. This sword's being held up for quite a while by only two little supports here. So what we need to do if we're going to try to make this auto support thing work is we're going to jump over to island and use this island detector and have it search for more islands that haven't been supported. Here it's only finding three. What I like to do is actually bump this up to detailed. Whoops. I'm going to... Just delete those islands that it, it said it found and have it search again. 
And when you do detailed, or I think the next one's ultra, it'll take a lot longer, but I think it's worth it. And check it out, it found 55. And what's really cool is that we can literally just hit add support to all islands. And there we go. And there's a lot of support here at these bracings. With this model, it's not as bad as what I've seen with other models, but like this, this section here, this is gonna print out as basically one big chunk of support. And what you'll find is it'll scratch up your model as you try to take these off and they won't break very easily. You'll have to try to chop them up with like some cutters or something like that. You'll have supports flying everywhere because it'll, you'll have to apply a lot of pressure just to break them apart. So this is doable. This might print okay. Um, you could always just add some supports to this to make sure that certain parts of the model aren't going to have big issues. Maybe something like this like this and then you could go back in turn off auto supports and then like I said I like to turn off bracing and just kind of optimize everything that's doable I mean it, it it's it's it, it could work sometimes it'll show here um, that there are certain parts of your model that are being overlapped this mini support here this one might be okay but some, yeah actually no look it's totally overlapping you can see it overlapping there, but we're not getting an error. And you'll get that with these auto supports. I like to do it manually, and I'm gonna show you how to do it manually right now. So now you've seen, I guess the fast way. I'm gonna show you the slow way <laughs> that's better. <laughs> we're just gonna delete all those islands, and we're going to do this on our own. When it comes to these circular bases, you guys are gonna get insanely good quality from this. We're gonna stick a medium support. Here's, here's my uh, support structures, by the way. 0 0.6, 3, and 1.3. And then for the light, I like to do 0.3, 2, and 1. And I'll change these. You'll see me change these. And, but these are what I have set to the default. If you want to set the default, you just click on whichever one you want to change. So for example, we could change this to 0.35 and change that default. We override preset. Oh, yeah. Override preset light right there. Now that's the default for light. So when it shows that star, that means you're not at your default right now and you can just click it again and it'll go back to whatever your default is. Now essentially, we go from bottom to top because the bottom is the most important part, so we wanna have the biggest focus on that because that's the foundation of the supports. And everything printing above that is going to have an easier time if you've made sure, if you've made sure that those islands are supported well and that they're stable, they're not gonna be wobbling a lot. That's gonna make the rest of the print have a much easier time as it goes up, especially if you've got mostly 45 degree angles. So at those bottom islands, I like to try to put a medium support generally. Sometimes a light support is fine, but if it really needs to be stable like it does here, because we got it's printing at a pretty far angle over here, we're gonna wanna make sure to have a medium support there. And if it's a bigger model, you might wanna consider having a heavy support instead. Then I'm gonna go around the edge because we wanna make sure that the edge looks good, right? Wherever is the most important parts to look good and to be stable, that's where we're gonna to wanna to have the biggest focus on our supporting. And as we get closer to the top here, I'm actually gonna move a little bit away from the edge. And the reason for that is because down here, these are this is an island, and then over here, this is, this is printing before this part of the base is printing. So we want to have this nice and supported because otherwise we're printing this big old shape here. Let me show you real quick. If I bring this down, printing this big old horizontal shape. And if we don't have supports down here right at the bottom, it's going to have a hard time printing that far out without support. Whereas when we get up here to where these supports are, the edge above this is printing after the support, whereas if we if we have the support up here, then everything below that, this whole section below that, is not having any help. It's not having any support. So I like to try to go just a little bit further down on the top edges, just to make it so that this section here has a little bit less wobble on the way up because you don't need it right there at the top. That's the part that's going to have the easiest time printing. Just right on the edge again. And I'll stick one more right there. And then I actually might stick one right there as well. So we have a little bit higher density down here at the bottom and that's because it's the most important part. 
Now we got all this midsection that's going to be printing on its own. Yes, we are going to want more support there. So what I like to do with these bottom sections of a base, like a circular or a square base, is just spread out some medium supports. Because once again, this is this is the foundation of the whole model. And it needs to be nice and stable. And then we're going to spread out some light supports. Now, as you can see, I'm pretty dang liberal about uh, adding supports to models. And the reason for that is because, as I've found, as I've been selling models and as I've been selling 3D designs and um, pre-supported designs, it's just, it's just been better to have the print work the first time and know that it's going to work that time and every time and work on other people's printers the first time. And the only way that's possible is being liberal with the supports. I could try to be really optimal and try to add as little support as possible just to save a few cents in resin. And you're literally going to be saving a few cents in resin. It's not a big difference that you're going to be making by taking away supports. Um, but if you do that and you happen to have few, too few supports on certain areas, you're going to have entire parts of the print deformed. Now what do you need to do? Now you need to print the whole thing again which is going to lose you more resin than if you just added those few extra supports in the first place. So I think it's a lot more um, efficient, actually, and a lot more cost saving and a lot more cost efficient if you actually add more supports, not less. Um, that's my philosophy. I want to make sure that this edge is nice and clean on the inside, too. So I'm going to add some light supports just on the edge. What you see here is we've got two supports kind of overlapping and when supports are going to be that close that they're overlapping and you don't need them both to be holding up a significant amount of weight what i like to do is actually just delete the smaller one and then if you alt click you can actually join it to another support so i'm just going to alt click here and join it to this one and just take a look make sure the angle looks good like it's not going to be printing at a really severe angle and to me that looks good. I could actually even move the bottom of this, move it up like that, do something like that. Or if I wanted to, I could move it to a whole different support. But I think it's going to be best and the most natural for it to just come right off of that one. And I especially like to do this if it's a medium support underneath or a medium support that I'm attaching it to because that support has a bigger diameter, 1.3 instead of one. And that means that this support is going to be less wobbly. The support's going to be more stable to hold up weight, so we could have maybe multiple light supports actually attached to this one. And that makes it a little bit more optimal. So you can still do some optimization and still save some money and maybe some headache when you're taking off supports. Now let's start working on these capes, which are going to be a little bit of a nightmare. And I found that they usually are when it comes to models like this. But we're going to do it, and it's going to work. I'm going to go ahead and stick a medium support here because, once again, these are going to have to really um, be nice and stable on their way up until it connects with the rest of the model. So what we're going to have to do, unless we want to tilt the model more, which, by the way, here's a quick tip. That is possible. If we wanted to tilt, tilt this, you see how that's a big problem? I used to think this was impossible and that we we couldn't do things like tilting models or rescaling models, but you totally can. Go to prepare, just select all the supports, right click and recalculate. And then obviously the raft is not recalculated, so we're just gonna go back in. I'm actually gonna turn this off. We don't wanna optimize them yet. I don't like to optimize till the end because I wanna be able to edit each one individually. But we just go ahead and click I'm feeling lucky and it, it just redid the raft for us and we tilted them it, it's it's just beautiful it's just wonderful let's get back on track here though okay so it's recommending a mini support here and um i believe we do have it set to this 0.6 whereas if we do a light it's going to be this 0.3 these light supports work surprisingly well they print surprisingly well even though it's super thin but um, the thinner it is, the less, support, the less weight it's going to be able to hold. 
in place and you might want to have maybe some extras. Sometimes it won't do a mini and you can just click this little box here for a mini support. Another quick tip is that if you hold Alt, you can obviously create a support that connects to anything, right? But if you also hold Control at the same time, so Alt and Control, you're making a mini support that you can connect anywhere. Sometimes I'll even do that with like maybe a little parts protruding out here and I'll just add a little mini support and connect it. That's not maybe necessary here. I think we need more like large supports that are going to be able to actually hold up this weight because there's a lot of weight that needs to be supported. But um, I will probably doing, be doing that other method with other parts. Like for example, like these fingers. We might do a mini support here and a mini support here or something like that. And it just kind of depends on the situation. Here it's not gonna work because that's gonna overlap. So I'll do something more like this, reduce the tip length and reduce the diameter to something smaller so that it's kind of out of the way. But we'll be going over stuff like that here in a little bit. For right now, I'm just gonna add a bunch of supports. Oh, and yeah, check this out. So I changed the uh, support settings. Another way to go back to whatever settings you want is just click on a support and now you've got those settings. And I'm just going to very liberally add supports, not only on these yellow sections, and that's important you guys, I'm going to be adding supports pretty much wherever I can up here. Now why am I doing that if this is not, um, if this is not at a significant angle, this should be able to print straight up, right? Yeah, it can, but like I said, we need to prevent it from wobbling. We need to prevent it from having this whole section here. If we didn't have these supports, let's say we didn't have these supports here. We print all this, and then it tries to print up. This is going to try to wobble back and forth, back and forth. And you're going to start seeing all these layer lines, sometimes really drastic ones, on your prints because this is moving back and forth. And you're going to say, what like what happened why is my print deforming and it's because it's it's just moving it's as it goes in and out of the resin the resin kind of pushes around and pushes the model and even if these are stable the further you get up here and the skinnier this part is um it's just going to try to wobble on you you could try overexposing it so that it's really stable but then you could have layer separation if it's overexposed because the resin the next layer isn't able to stick to it. So these are things that you just have to be aware of and careful about. And know, hey, if this, this has the potential to wobble, I'm gonna add some extra support here. Okay, I think we've supported this part of this cape, or this side of this cape, pretty well. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Just make sure there's nothing overlapping here. So I'm just going to do basically the same methodology here. Just find the islands, make sure that they're supported the best and have the most stability. Because they're going to be bearing most of the weight. So I can find like an island right here. And maybe put a medium support or um, just make sure that it's well supported and stable and then another one here and then add a bunch of light supports wherever I can to stabilize the whole thing.
we can actually attach some supports here from this cape just to hold it in place. And then they're kind of holding each other in place in a way as they build up. Sometimes what you can do is um, go ahead and go to visibility and do something like tips and bases. Or one of my favorites is contact, especially when I'm working on like the base of something so I can just see exactly where I have all of the actual points of contact. So I'm being like extra liberal, I would say, with how many supports that I'm adding. This is more than I think I would usually add. And I think it's because I'm recording. But um, what you're gonna wanna do is kind of test the capabilities of your 3D printer. The way that you can do that is maybe start by doing something similar to what I'm doing here. And then with each model that you support after that, just do a little bit less and see how well it prints. Yeah, you might not need quite this many, unless you want to really make sure that it's not going to fail. Okay, I'm gonna start supporting the sword now. Hope you can see here what we've got for the capes. But now let's go ahead and start doing these swords. And we're gonna use the same methodology, which is from bottom to top, focus on the bottom parts first. Now, the problem with using a medium support here is when you go to take that medium support off, the sword might straight up break. <laughs> and I've had this happen quite a bit, especially with small, thin parts of models. And we wanna make sure that this looks good. This is like one of the most is accented part of the models. Here's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna do a couple of light supports on those islands. And we got this part protruding out, but it's so small. So we could either do a mini support like this, which that could work. Actually, I think I will do that. The only other thing I was thinking of was doing something like this and make the diameter like really small, like 0.5 or something like that, just to get a good angle. Um, but I think I am just gonna do a straight up mini support like this. But are two supports gonna be quite enough for this? I don't think they are to make sure that this, to prevent this from deforming as it prints up and at an angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some more small supports, kind of like this mini support. We could maybe do some more mini supports or what we could do to kind of have some things that are at an angle to really add more stability is just do small supports. So instead of mini, we're just gonna do small supports at maybe 0.5 millimeter diameter that are going to be able to hold it up from an angle. I like to do that. I feel like it holds it together like a claw a little bit more than just supporting it from the bottom. Now I know some of these down here are overlapping. I'm not too concerned about it as long as we don't have like a crazy amount of overlapping. Now the fingies. We're going to have a fun time on the fingies. We're gonna do something similar to what we did with the bottom of the sword, which is going to be, just make sure the bottom parts have like a stable structure to build off of. And then I think what we'll do here is some mini supports. So we got that one there. Let's see if this works without overlapping anything. It does. And this one may or may not does it's close though so I think we're gonna do one of those kind of small support things instead and you're gonna be surprised at how good that result comes out um, what I might even do is just add a couple more minis here okay sometimes it'll do supports that protrude out like this and um, surprisingly they tend to print pretty well so it's not a big concern to me but if it needs to support a lot of extra weight then that angle is going to make it hard and it's going to want to bend up and down and maybe cause the print to deform a little bit so you might consider just increasing the diameter just a little bit One thing that I'm gonna point out about swords and other small protrusions that are facing towards the FEP, like away from the build plate, like, like the tip of a sword or something like that. The FEP, when it's curing this layer, this, this layer and the rest of the print has to 
pop off of the FEP. There's like pressure that builds up or I don't know, what's the best way to explain this? You're having to rip this thing off the FEP essentially. You're popping it off. So it's pulling until it pops off, right? And there's pressure in the direction of the FEP. It's trying to pull towards the FEP as it pulls away from it. Um, so you have to keep that in mind with certain parts, especially like if this was protruding out more, because these swords are curved, it's not so much of an issue, but if it was a straight sword, I would actually probably want to put um, supports like like right at the tip, like almost right there at the tip of the sword to make sure that it doesn't bend as it pulls away from the FEP during those last few layers that it cures. Because it'll literally bend towards the FEP in some cases, like some corners and edges. You might actually want to have some support like right there on the edge. Okay, I will say you're going to want to be very careful taking these supports off, um, especially if you've added a lot of them. You don't want the sword to break before the supports break, you feel me? So sometimes what I'll even do is take these kind of claw supports, I'll just select them all real quick, and I'll actually decrease the tip diameter to something like maybe 0.28 or maybe even something a little smaller like 0.26. And that just makes it so that they break off especially easy because they're really just there for stabilization, right? They're there to kind of hold it in place. They're not necessarily there to hold up weight. So they don't have to have a big tip diameter. And um, especially on smaller parts, like very small thin parts that you're afraid might break when you take the supports off, you might consider just reducing the tip diameter to make them that much easier to just pop off. He's got another capey thingy. He's got his, oh, it's the front of this, whatever it is, waist, cloth. <laughs> I'm just gonna call this a loincloth. We gotta deal with this loincloth here. Hey, it's me again. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the loincloth real quick, and then we're gonna jump over to the next model, because I think you guys get the gist of this, right? Um, I'll just be doing like the shoulders and the other gauntlet and stuff like that. But the loincloth, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have enough support here, but you also don't necessarily want to have like big thick supports on the legs, cause we could do something like this, but if we have like big thick supports, then we're gonna have divots on the legs. It's gonna be one of those things that you have to kind of um, evaluate the pros and cons. I'll go ahead and get rid of my face again. But um, what I ended up doing is actually going down to the base, like this. And try to have like a, 
as much of a straight up and down support here as possible. So doing something like this. And then what I decided to do is add some minis. Just make sure that this is nice and and stuck to these supports so it's not going to rip off very easily. And then um, we're actually going to do, just to add a little bit more stability, put some over to the sides just to keep his loincloth from waving in the wind. Um, one thing I'll point out though real quick is that I didn't really pay attention um, to where the islands were and we've got an island it looks like right there and right there so I have to move the supports real quick and to make sure that these are going to stay attached to the loincloth I am going to increase the tip diameter to 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is still going to be very hard to notice um, and it's just gonna be on the base and on the bottom of the loincloth, and I don't have a problem with that. And really, they're, they're gonna be practically invisible at 0.4. Um, I think about 0.45 to about 0.5 is where you start seeing a divot. Okay, now what we're going to do, since this one's done, is we're just gonna optimize it real quick. And what I like to do is turn off bracings and literally just do the optimization and keep raft on because it might change the raft a little bit depending on how the support's optimized. From what I can tell, it doesn't matter what this is set to because this is just for the auto supports, I believe. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and click this and it's gonna do its best to remove some of the support structure and then kind of have them brace each other just towards the top, just to, it optimizes, I guess. It, it removes some of the supports which makes it a little bit easier to take them off. But it also, because it does a little bit of this bracing at an angle, this actually is going to strengthen the print, not weaken it, even though there's less support. And we're going to go ahead and move over to the other model. All right, you guys, it's time for our hard surface model. And here's the reveal. This is the Firebird class frigate, which is the 39th ship added to the Brave Sun um, tabletop miniatures game. Uh, which is all designed for 3D printing. There are already 38 ships in existence and now we're going to be adding more with this new campaign. So this one's 39 and we're going to be supporting it. You can see here, see here we've got the uh, twist lock rod hole and what that is is it's a new mounting system that we designed. So you print these rods essentially that um, have this shape on the end. It goes into the hole and then it twists 90 degrees to lock the model in place. People have really loved the um, that system so far and there's some important tips that I actually want you guys to know when it comes to supporting these holes like this. There's, there's um, some things that you might not usually think about that could cause problems later on when you're actually washing and curing. This one's actually going to be a bit easier I think than the organic model. That's at least my experience with hard surface models and supporting them. All right, so generally, I just do a 45 degree angle um, with spaceships and with long hard surface models. Um, I find that a 45 degree angle is usually the most optimal. Sometimes I will go a little bit further to like a 60 degree angle. Okay, now what's really cool is if you have a symmetrical model like this, or you have symmetrical parts, you might be able to make this work. If we go into manual supporting and we go to this mirror section here and hit the X mirror or depending on the orientation of your model it might be the Y mirror. We can actually add supports, more than one support at the same time on both sides. We're going to do all the same stuff that we talked about before except I'm just going to show you a few different tips and especially what I'm talking about is edges like this. and what I like to do when it comes to edges like this and corners is literally just put a light support right there at the corner itself. Um, if I want to make sure that that corner is actually going to print and have at least some support as this prints upwards, I want it to have at least something to go off of. 
And what I'll do here is I'll do another one here at this corner and one over here. And we're gonna do kind of the same things that we talked about before of not only just supporting all the yellow, but also adding some supports on the sides to hold the whole model in place and kind of keep it stable. And what I'm gonna do here instead of a light support is I'm actually gonna do a medium and a medium. And then what I like to do is just add some mediums up along the bottom in places that would be mostly inconspicuous. And now I'm just, now that, that, that it's stable, you know, I'm just gonna go through and I'm going to support other parts of the model with light supports, whatever I can to try to preserve a lot of these plates. We have, I, I, I have a lot of plates to my models. Um, to my designs on the bottom and the top and I'm just going to try to preserve as many of them as I can and as many corners of them as I can by just adding some light supports where possible and it's not always possible sometimes I might have to do something like this have that protrude from that direction and then just do like the alt control click add a mini support there I actually have already supported this model um, off camera, so I don't think I'll go through and do the whole thing again But what I could do is I could show you real quick what the model ended up looking like One thing I want you to consider when it comes to holes like this is that if we totally surround this thing with support um, Because we want to make sure that it's the right shape, right? So we might do something like this and then like this Maybe even go further like this and it's just like totally surrounded but then we also end up with a bunch of other supports to support some of these panels. Then the hole's completely covered by the end, right? That's something that you wanna be a little bit careful about. And the reason for that is because resin will get stuck in there. So if you wash the print, um, and there would be a lot more support than this, but if you wash the print, um, resin can get stuck in there and also alcohol can get stuck in there. Like even if you do wash all the resin out, um, but there's some residual alcohol that you use to clean the model. And then if you sit this, maybe you pop it off the build plate and you sit it here, that alcohol might still actually stay stuck in there, especially because it's such a small hole, it's not going to drain out and it's not gonna evaporate easily because there's not a lot of air that can flow through because it's totally covered up. So you may want to keep that in mind and maybe even try moving some of your supports or even deleting some of your supports around it just to make sure that it has a little bit of airflow or maybe you can even stick like, um, maybe you can even blow on it, you know? And that's what I'll do sometimes is blow on it or I'll use just some compressed air and blow it in there because if that alcohol sits in that hole for too long, it will deform the resin and then the twist lock won't work very well. Or what I'll do actually usually now is break off the supports, blow it out, then cure it. I know some people cure and then they'll like wait for it to dry, then cure and then break off the supports. What I've been doing with models that have significant holes like this that are important is I will break off the supports and blow out those holes with some compressed air real quick or just with my mouth, you know, just, just blow it out and then um, go ahead and cure it. And this is how it turned out after optimization. I ended up just having like some little uh, support protrusions just to hold those missiles in place and to keep them from curving upwards or deforming upwards towards the FEP. I did that on all eight of the missiles. And then just some supports on the bottom to hold everything up and some from the side to hold things in place and where I could, I tried to support some panels, some corners of panels so that they would um, just have the best shape possible, I guess, without having too much support and having um, all of the uh, divots from the supports showing up and stuff like that, or breaking some of these panels off. One last thing that I will share, actually, that I did here, I actually added bracing just to this section. So if you actually just mouse over a certain section and then you go to the magic tab, we can do optimize and bracing, and it'll only brace those supports specifically and it won't brace the rest. So I figured, because these are so tall and they don't have a lot of bracing from the rest of the support structure, why don't we have them brace each other and they'll, be, they'll still be easy to break off. 
Whereas if we braced all of this, it would be like one massive chunk of support that wouldn't break off of each other very well. And we'd damage and scratch up the bottom of this print when we try to take the supports off. So I, I did a few bracings here too. I just selected some of these and braced them. Um, but other than that, I just kind of kept it um, optimized but not braced. And these pop off beautifully. Let's take a look at the results of this one and the other model that we supported. All right, you guys, it's the next day. We're gonna take a look at how the print turned out. I've got my mask and gloves on. I know I need a respirator. I still haven't bought one. I've been trying out these um, air purifiers from Anycubic. I've got two of them. Since this video came so unexpectedly, <laughs> you'll never know when the next one comes if you're not subscribed and clicking the bell. If I were to go back, I probably wouldn't put some of those mini supports. I'm gonna have to take like a really small tool to get those. But one thing I will show you is um, the base is like beautifully circular and flat. And now I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cure this guy and cure the ship. Um, I guess the last thing I'll show you is this base and it's literally just going to pop right off. 